Hello, I'm Edgar Kramer from Soundstage Australia, and uh, I'm here with uh, Daryl Wilson from Wilson Audio. Thank you, Daryl, for joining us today. Thank, Thank you, Edgar, you for having me. Uh, okay, Daryl, I want to start off by asking you, um, what, were, what were the areas of the highest importance in terms of developing Sabrina X coming from the Sabrina original Sabrina platform? Uh, in, in any product development cycle, um, we, we look at what's been developed over the last, you know, four or five years. Typically, development cycles are about four to six years. And um, uh, we've got a culture of excellence here. So the idea of excellence in all things. And a lot's happened in the last four and a half, five years since the original Sabrina was introduced. We looked at how can we um, how can we refine um, vibration control in the enclosure? Um, how can we get better performance from the spike system? Um, we looked at the signal path. How can we get a really clean signal path uh, via the custom binding posts and the uh, the crossover topology? Um, we also in incorporated the new audio, uh, uh, the audio cap X capacitors in the crossover, which we hand wind and make here now at yes. the factory in Provo, Utah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Convergence Energy Mark V tweeter found in the XVX as well as in the WAM. Um, it's a beautiful sounding uh, tweeter and great yes. high frequency extension and uh, airiness and smooth. And we knew that uh, the Sabrina platform could benefit from that. Uh, same with the woofer that was developed for the Sasha DAW. Mm -hmm. So taking all those elements, going from the top of the enclosure to the bottom and everything inside, it's really an exercise of refinement and learning what are, are executing and implementing all the things we've learned in the last five years. Sure. Um, I've always found it quite uh, remarkable that there's, there's a, a Wilson uh, house sound that may have changed over the years slightly, but nevertheless, it's, there's always been a, a signature uh, sound, and it's and it's been a mix of uh, you know great dynamics, terrific low end, and very precise imaging, yeah. and so on, among other things. Um, and I, I see and I hear how that's been carried through all the way from tune tot to. Uh, Alex, I haven't heard the XVX, but all the way to Alex, I hear that sort of consistent sound signature. What, what in your opinion, are the technical aspects that that uh, allow that to happen? Yeah, our, our true reference is live unamplified sound. So really going from the halls, local halls here in Utah Valley uh, to Salt Lake City of Ravenel Hall and, and uh, the Conserva Bell and the Grand Halls in Vienna. Uh, you know, you got uh, Musikverein and the Opera House there. Yes. Um, so, so the house sound is how do we get the sound that's being reproduced from this, um, this system here that's really a combination of, of raw elements and, and components that are refined. How do you get something that um, sounds natural and real and believable? When you close your eyes, you can feel yourself and picture yourself in these halls. Uh, so that's really the North Star. That's the, that's the reference there. So the, the emotional connection to music, um, as it is found in these environments, really would be the consistent thread between the tune tot and um, the Chronosonic XVX. Um, and all the things that I had mentioned earlier that we uh, implemented and were able to develop into the Sabrina X, um, I, I think help us get us closer to that. Sure. Okay, so going from Sabrina to Sabrina X, the, uh, the physical uh, design of the speaker is almost identical. Um, and obviously you, you mentioned the, the, the changes and the refinements that you've made in terms of drivers and so on uh, and the enclosure itself. Uh, but is the platform itself as as good as it can get in terms of uh, its phys physical design, its aesthetics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it, it punches well above its weight, mm -hmm. and I know I would encourage anyone that's interested in taking it for a test drive. Uh, most of our dealers have these on display and available for demo. Sure. Um, so uh, don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. they, right? no, uh, we, we've incorporated really all the latest innovations currently available. Um, and it's and it's really the most compact, uh, compact design for a floor standing model. Um, so um, 
you know, with that being said, I think that uh, people will be surprised when they hear it. it that's one of the biggest uh, comments that people say is sure. that they walk into a room, they see Sabrina, Sabrina X now, uh, they see a small system, a small floor standing speaker. And after they're done listening, they always comment on how big it sounds and, and how unexpected the sound stage is. It's true because um, in isolation, or in comparison with speakers of its size, it's it's quite a massive sound. And then you, know, you discover that going from Sabrina to say Sasha DAW, then you discover, okay, well, there's there's more scale and there's more more of everything. Uh, but it, you probably notice that only in comparison. So in terms of comparing the Sabrina X with speakers of its size, it's, it's quite remarkable what it can do. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, we really do believe in, in giving uh, customers who I really feel like they're saving their money for a long time, that this is a, a well thought out decision to decide to purchase a Wilson Audio product and giving the most value for what they're buying is very important to us. Sure. Okay. I, I was curious as on, on a personal level, um, what do you look for in terms of design? So uh, you, have a, you have a set of parameters that you want to um, stick by when when you're thinking of a product but in terms of what you want it to sound like and and how it affects uh your personal uh music listening experience what 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 things do you look for yeah my uh my dad started out with uh two main pillars sonic pillars uh, dynamic contrast and harmonic expression and throughout the decades if you think back to the wah puppy uh, series uh, you think back with the X1 Grand Slam and uh, the Max. Um, these systems were able to, to very accurately produce dynamic contrast and harmonic expression. Some people with the older Wilson House sound, the older uh, sound, it was a little too analytical to some listeners. Mm -hmm. By pushing the envelope and continually, to re continually refining each element, we finally got to a point to where I think that a third pillar is appropriate, and that's micro detail. So with the combination of dynamic contrast, harmonic expression, and micro detail, you're really able to get in to the, uh, to, to the elements of the, the, the emotion in the music. Um, the closer you get to the real thing, the more the mind-body, the, uh, the, the connection to that music becomes uh, closer and closer as you're listening. Um, so, um, uh, for instance, when uh, I'm developing a loudspeaker, um, uh, my dad and I, and now, you know, myself, uh, listen to Ragtime Razzmatazz, one of his recordings. Yes. And that's great for harmonic expression mm -hmm. and extension. Uh, sonatas for violin and piano with David Abel and uh, Julie uh, Steinberg. Uh, the, the Bartok piece, uh, Romanian folk dances, it's, it's hauntingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it really allows me to, to listen into that micro detail. And uh, Winds of War and Peace with Lowell Graham, of course, conducting the uh, National Symphonic Winds. Talk about dynamic contrast. Right. You know, he, uh, he referred to it... Um, as the uh, the MOD, the mallet of death, so that drum, <laughs> and he positioned the drum in a way where that you know when when that whack hits, it really comes through the system, and so it go the dynamic contrast is um, is amazing in that piece. All three of those are are Wilson Audio File recordings. Sure. Um, all three of those we're very familiar with. Um, and then uh, tapping into uh, uh, recordings from the different halls that we've personally been to, halls that we've had access to and been able to go to uh, rehearsals and walk around the hall and listen to how, how do the different seats sound, right? Because no two seats in the same hall sound the same. Sound the same, yeah. yeah. And, and, and really, when you, yeah, when you think about it, um, People argue, you know, what's better live, you know, being there in the hall or, you know, your hi-fi system at home. Um, I think it can be effectively argued either way. But it's interesting to note that no one will ever sit where the microphone is placed. Sure. And so, you know, it's it's so high, it's over the conduct, you know, it's always yeah. in a place where you can never physically be. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it it's uh, it's been a wonderful experience to be able to go to these different halls, listen in different areas in the room and get a, a, 
uh, a feel for the room, uh, not just sonically hearing, but your body senses the space that you're in. Sure. Now, taking that to uh, to crossover fine tuning and developing loudspeakers, once you get the system refined down to a point where your body is now being uh, really fooled to believing that you're sensing that hall, that's when you know you're on the right path. Sure. And I get those, those sorts of experiences sometimes when I listen to something that is really, really working in terms of beautifully reproducing a recording. And you, I find myself uh, drifting away from the analytical side of my brain and yeah. forget the review and I just become emotionally engaged. Uh, yeah. Then I have to come back to reality and uh, say, well, okay, this is very good you know yeah. and i've experienced that with, do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with, with, with quite a lot of uh, uh review products um okay daryl on that note we uh might uh, uh call it a day um thank you very much for your time and uh i look forward to uh the new products when they arrive and of course um uh, look out for the sabrina x review coming on soundstage australia soon thank you yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.